Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be um, part of the backroom conversations that happens between um, mentor and a new champion, a podcast champion. So not a lot of times we get a chance to talk about RMK Productions and how to do a podcast. There are a lot of people out there that are saying that they are podcast experts, and I do not deny them their, their, their title nor am I putting shame on their game. But I will tell you, the same way that you write a book that says Think and Grow Rich, which is one of the first books I've, I've read, my answer is, if you think to grow rich, how come there's so many people that are poor? Um, when you, you talk about the millionaire next door, ask yourself, are they talking about you when you don't live next door to a millionaire? But what makes people rich? is content and conversation and having accent, access to that conversation. And what we're going to do today is give you a sneak peek of what goes on behind the doors of RMK Productions. So without further ado, this is another episode of Talking With Kevin and Son and People You Should Know. This is brought to you by RMK Productions and the 10 United Podcast Network. Our mission is through the power of story to uplift voices, share stories and experiences and perspectives using the framework of teaching, learning, and modeling. Our purpose is hope, helping other people every day. And so today I have a very special guest, a friend, someone I look up to. He's much younger than me. He is so freaking exciting. He has got a resume that it's like, trust me, if I had lived this life when i um, I was as young as he is, I would probably be telling the same story that I'm telling you uh, today. He is an entrepreneur based out of South Carolina. He is passionate about his music um, business. He's a social media. I'm going to tell you his conversation when he talks about um, social media, it is just breathtaking. And um, we're going to talk about the business of podcasting, being a Black podcaster, we're going to talk about the conversation we had um, early on about podcasting and the historically black colleges and universities. And we're going to talk about collaboration and trying to move this movement forward because we're both members of the D Divine Nine. And we'll explain that to our guests, that people don't understand what that is. But collaboration started a long, long time, time ago. And this is an uncut version of conversations that... Um, Ife, and I, I, yes. I'm not even going to try to butcher your name, but I want to. No, it's fine. Hey, when 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 you can't pronounce the name because I'm Nigerian, I'm a Carolina bred Nigerian, mostly in the Carolinas. Shout out to South Carolina, but I love North Carolina. That go to guy, I branded myself well. Come on now, you can say but that go to you, guy. You, you stole my you stole my tag two line because that's that's what I wanted to to actually get. get I, I wanted to say about this man. He, he has the tagline of the name, and this is great, the go-to guy. Welcome, yeah. Effie. All right. So, man, I young, wanna, can, I, can I hit him with that coming to America line real quick? Because I'm an 80s baby. You can hit him with baby. anything you want to. This is, this is just sheer in, entertainment today. <laughs> I am so happy to be here right now. There All we right. go. <laughs> uh, that is great. Well, um, part of the reason we wanted to bring this um, to you, because one, I have a different spin on podcasting. So um, a friend of mine, a comedian, TK Kirkland, after our interview, he said, you need to make sure it's one thing. He has hundreds of thousands of followers that follow him. He's a stand-up comedian. And he said, when you're doing an interview, he goes, remember, the interview is not about you. And um, and I said, I, I, I held that. But this interview is a conversation between me and Ife. And so um, some of the conversation is going to be about um, what I do, how I teach, how I inspire and how we educate young podcasters, because you can go through and the message is the same. The microphone is a microphone, no matter if you spend sixty dollars on it, five hundred dollars on it. The connection to how you stream your video we all stream through the same services and so, and so forth. We all un understand that, you know, we have to start 
with somewhat of an introduction um, in our podcast. But the key thing is, what are podcasters? And then when you look at the fact as you ask the question, is that as a black male or female or um, someone of a different gender persuasion, how do you fit into that? So when I first started um, looking into podcasts, I was releasing uh, one of my books. Uh, everything I need to learn about life, I learned playing high school football. I originally started out with um, the logo, Talking Wit, W-I-T, Kevin. And the reason why I use that, because one, I love reading. I was probably one of few people that almost graduated from one of our historically black colleges, not formally being able to read or write because I was an athlete. I'm not saying the system pushed me through, but if it had not been for my father telling me I had two choices to get an education because we could not afford it, he said I had to run fast and jump high. And I did both. And I was very good at both of them. And because of my personality and my ability to remember content and to be able to tell a story, I got an education. I chose, and I tell people all the time, you have two um, parts of your conversation that you need to understand, chance and choice. I chose to not graduate illiterate from a historically black college because I wanted to represent, I wanted to represent strong because I knew one day that I would have an impression on a young man that called himself the go-to guy. And that's man, how, that's and that's, that's my, my story. And that's how we, we came to be. And then understanding that in 2019, go ahead. I said in 2019, there were only 780,000 podcasters registered. When I looked into the diversity of that club, I realized one thing. There wasn't a lot of inclusion in that, that sorority or that fraternity. It means, what I mean by inclusion, representation of Black men, Black women, or gender specific, and, and that had a mic in front of their hand. In 2021, that number rose from 1.7 plus um, million registered podcasters. And still, we were yet but a pimple on the behind of our parents as far as representation. So when I decided to put a mic in my hand, I decided to make sure that I was going to have a platform where I can tell the stories of people that has stories that would never get told because they weren't of celebrity status. My guest today is a young man that's made such an impression on me that we are creating this podcast um, to share this con content about not only podcasting, but um, black podcasters. And, and I guess, you know, me being unofficially one of his many mentors, because he has a whole tribe that is part of his. So um, the, the first question I always ask, why do you want to be, why do you want to podcast? Okay. You're asking why I want a podcast because I, I feel just like similar to you. We have stories and experiences that need to be told. We have conversations, especially we as men of the diaspora. I don't like saying African-American, black or African, because I look for what unites us and what separate them what, and not what separates us. And I feel like a lot of these titles separate us. You know what I'm saying? Like when I went to the University of South Carolina and I had my electrical engineering degree with a minor in African-American studies, I wanted to find out my, my fellow people's struggle. I wanted to learn about it more. And my de facto hometown is Orangeburg, South Carolina. And if you do any research on Columbia, South Carolina, you, you know about Cleveland Sellers and you know about the Orangeburg Massacre. And with the Orangeburg Massacre, that was a situation, if you just look it up, it's where a whole lot of stuff that should not have happened, happened. And the fact that Cleveland Sellers was my advisor for my minor means everything to me. Because his son, Bakari Sellers, him and I went to, the, went to Orangeburg Wilkinson together and we graduated the same class, class of 01. Check it up. It's, it's, it's in the history books. So I'm already... I'm already somewhat anointed by the people that have already been blessed to, to have walked with and worked with, even in me getting my, my degree. 
and I'm and I'm forever thankful for it. That's all right. I, um, content is king, uh, especially with um, educating people. I've said this to you before. Uh, education is not designed to make you comfortable. It's designed to make you think. I don't think a lot of people know about the conversation that you just put on the, on, on the table in detail. The same way when I shared my experience of going to Lake Placid, of going to the John Brown Memorial. Can, since we're talking about content, and this is a podcast, can you elaborate? Because I want to make sure we don't miss anything when they understand what the role and responsibility of being a Black podcaster is all about, or a person of color. Because like, like you said, words divide us and we're trying to unite people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, just to give a little um, framework, because this is definitely history in the making. The present is a gift and the future is what we're looking to build forward to. Cleveland Sellers was, was one of the leaders of SNCC. The, the, and SNCC stands for Student Non-Violating Coordinating Committee. And he was in Orangeburg, South Carolina State University. And the Orangeburg massacre was a situation that happened during the civil rights era where black students were protesting racism. And there were four students that went to the University of South Carolina that were, were martyrs for the cause. They, 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 were, they were gunned down in violence. And then they tried to frame Cleveland sellers for this situation. So he was in jail for a period of time, but however, he was exonerated of the charges. And then he decided to be a civil rights leader himself and just paying it forward. Um, he did work for a period of time at, at the University of South Carolina in African-American studies. And it just so happened that I was blessed for him. Sorry, there was a call coming in. I was blessed for him to be my advisor for my minor. And then even before that blessing happened, being that I was in, in Orangeburg, South Carolina, um, my dad it teaches at Claflin University. Um, he's in physics, so shout out to Dr. Ekpanuma. He has his PhD in physics. And also shout out to my mom because she got her nursing degree at South Carolina State University, South Carolina State University in Claflin for all my South Carolina heads. And shout out to all the HBCUs, so low key, HBCUs raised me. My mom got her nursing degree from South Carolina State University. So, you know, even though, even though I went to a PWI, HBCUs raised me. And I never forgot that. And so when educating people on um, how to do a podcast interview, I'm going to break down the conversation we just had with, with Effie. He presented himself after um, I had given an introduction about his background. I'm establishing him as a expert of what, um, what we're talking about, but I've also, because of I gave the three parts of what we're doing. We're also going to have a little entertainment on there. But you've always got to remember when you're talking to um, or talking with your guests, you always have to remember there's a third person that's involved in this conversation. They're absent physically from it, but they're the reason why you are podcasting because they've tuned in on one of the channels um, and you can stream almost any channel. And you can't assume that the conversation you have, that they know the details. So as the interviewer viewer, or the podcast, if you notice the technique is that he put some information out there, assuming that I knew the information, but we also had to, to assume the person that just walked into the room, that just pulled into Starbucks, that just um, put their baby down to bed and they're sat back, propped up their feet and they're listening to this conversation because they want to learn how to do an interview. They need to know how to break it down the interview. I can write down the introduction and the parts of how an interview is to be made, but to actually experience it is priceless. And the transition between the um, content that you were given and the way that I supported it, and when I looped it back around in order to give the detail, you got a straight A on the introduction portion of um, podcasting. All right, so awesome. the, the biggest question that most people ask is, why do you want to podcast? Then the answer is, I don't know. The same way you don't write, write, write a book. You know, why do you write a book? The reason why we, we do things is because we have something that 
Uh, we think we have to say, and we think this is going to make a difference. And people that, that podcast like to talk. And that's part of the reason we, we do a podcast. The other thing is understanding, you know, uh, what your podcast is about. Let's role play a little bit. If a, mm-hmm. all right. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, if I were to be able to script out your podcast right now and you were writing it down, said, Kev, all right, this is my idea. And that's the way that it, it starts out. It starts out at a bunch of notes. Um, what is your podcast going to be about? Well, I actually sent you two pod. I sent you two, or we talked about two podcast ideas. Which one do you want me to roll with, Kevin? It's the one that the guy that's listening in, in, in Starbucks that didn't get a chance to, to get the email or the text. That's what we want to talk about. So we're going to go okay. ahead. We're roping. All right. So I'll, all right. So I'll go with the simpler, the simpler one. Cause the other one just, the other one just me is really near and dear to my heart. And that one just has a little bit more nuance. So I would, I would go with that go-to guy and friends. And what's, what's that go-to guy and friends about? Basically it's a conversation. It's a conversation amongst friends and we're talking about the latest pop culture relevant issues that are going on in the world and then also playing the best of the best indie artists music because i feel that the indie artists in the world independent artists independent music artists have material have music have energy that the world needs so if i could kind of surmise that Basically, think of the Breakfast Club that is that is run by iHeartRadio, but imagine it being people that you can relate to. I'm not saying that you can't relate to the people that are originally on the Breakfast Club, and then you're every time you're listening to the music, you're using your Shazam and like, who's this artist? What's this song? And then we're talking about stuff that is less clickbait and more relevant to what you might be going through, what your community is going through, or maybe even a new topic that you don't or maybe even a new topic that you didn't even know of so that's so that's kind of where i'm at with with that that go to guy in france that podcast so for my my listeners we just came up with the title of his podcast that go to guy now the first thing you need to do before you go out and spend money on the logo or anything else you need to go ahead and search and to make sure that you have the uh, domain rights to that, that um, you secure a logo in order to be mm-hmm. the go-to guy. Otherwise, you've got to ship. The other th- unique thing that he, he had, and I want you to understand, I'm going to correct two, two things, and then I'm going to support another, is that one, you see how easy it was for him to articulate what his podcast was going to be about. When you're looking to define on what you want to do, you want to make sure that it's something that when someone asks you, you don't have to think about. It just flows right, right off. Right now, we're doing podcasts one-on-one in the real deal. Um, the other thing is for people that are watching this um, um, on video, on YouTube, I want you to remember when you have a guest set up, okay, and I'll go through that, you want to make sure that they're stationary because right now I'm freaking out because he's driving and trying to do a podcast at the same thing. The same I'm pretty, time. I'm pretty, I'm pretty smooth. I'm about, I'm about to be parked. Don't worry oh. about it. But no, this this had to happen. And yes, please do not podcast and drive at the same time. You, we are exactly professionals. Right. You know what I'm saying? Here, exactly we're professionals. Right. Okay. Exactly right. well, we got it. You got it. So, and that this is the, this is all conversations that you need to have way be- before because um, the experts all tell you that one, you know, why do you want to podcast? Two, who's your who's your audience? And then the third. Um, thing they're going to ask, and it may be the fourth to some, depending on who you talk to, how many episodes are you planning to do per um, week, per month, per year, whatever. And this is the key to the success of the of every single podcast. There's a reason why this conversation has to be had, because this is the reason why people in business, people in life, people uh, in relationships either succeed or fail. And the question is, how many episodes are you going to release each month? 
Well, I just, I really want to do a gradual build because I understand that I'm actually building a foundation right now. I'm actually building a relationship. Um, you're my podcast mentor. You know, they call Joe Bud is the pod father. He was the pod father on, on Clubhouse. I think that was his actual name. But, you know, you're my mentor. So I feel that the way that you brought me into this podcast space is actually exactly how I need to be brought in. I'm learning on the go. I'm a student. I'm great and I'm articulate. But at the same time, there are elements of the podcasting that I do not know. There are elements of podcasting that I'm willing to learn. There is equipment. There's a team that I don't have as of right now, but I will get. So with podcasting, I think a lot of people want to be pitch perfect. They want to have the studio. They want to have all the equipment. They want to be able to have all the platforms planned out. So I'm telling any podcaster that's looking to get started, get started. Because one of the biggest things that people really identify with is seeing how you gradually got better. Let's look at one of the phenomenons that happened because of the pandemic versus. And I love singer songwriters. I love music. Music is my wheelhouse. So I remember hopping onto IG live and seeing Neo go against um, Dallas Austin or even seeing the missteps that happened um, with another one that happened. And it was the, the king of, 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 of swing music. And I'm forgetting his name, but he was a member of, of, of um, Black Street, mm. that phenomenal producer. And they had to redo that whole episode because he didn't have the right equipment. But once they redid it, the entertainment value was so great. And now, you know, shout out to Timbaland and, and shout out to Swiss Beats, two of my favorite producers, because I'm an 80s baby, but I grew up in the 90s. So their music is prominent in my head. And I'm a fan of Jodeci. Without Jodeci, you don't have Missy Elliott. You don't have Timbaland, by the way. Just saying, Google. Google is your friend. But I'm just saying, I don't mind being vulnerable because me being vulnerable, especially on Clubhouse and getting on the stage and speaking, is why me and my mentor, Kevin, are here giving you this amazing podcast and tutorial all in one right now. I was able to speak. He saw my hunger. He saw my drive to be able to be better and be more than what I am on that stage. He reached out to me and said, hey, this is my company. This is my opportunity. Will you accept coming in and being a part of my company? And I said, yes, because I realized I have great vision. I'm a visionary. But at the same time, I need help. I don't have that angel investor. My parents came from Nigeria. They're hard workers. They know, how to, they know how to clock into a nine to five. And, and shout out to my mom who, who worked third shift most of, her, most of her career. I don't know how you do third shift and still be a mom and handle family, but she did it. You do, you do what you have to do. And when you exactly, but I'm an entrepreneur. Yep. I'm a nine to five worker, but I have an entrepreneurial mindset. I will spend 60, 80, 100 hours working on my entrepreneurial endeavor because I know that eventually I want time freedom and I want to be able to do whatever I need to do wherever I am, wherever, wherever, wherever I may be in the world. Just give me a Wi-Fi connection. I'll handle the rest. So I can work nine to fives. That's great. You know, work, work for a corporation, be a great worker. But at the same time, my degree ain't made me a million dollars, but my entre- entrepreneurialism will make me a million dollars plus more. And then I can move wherever I need to, however I need to on my own schedule. You're that ex- part. You, you're exactly right. And the part that's going to make you successful, the part that's going to make any podcasters successful, because coming into this business, we have questions. We don't know. have a lot of answers. The reason why we tag team with people such as myself in the same way that I came into it, I start becoming a professional listener. And as a key to becoming a professional podcaster, you've got to become a, spec- a, a professional listener because all of us love to talk. But how do we learn? All right. The key thing is consistency. Consistency is the best success 
of this business takes 100 episodes in order for people to realize that you're a game game player, that you're in the game. Um, Evan Carmichael is one of the most successful um, podcasters or YouTubers in the market. He makes his living. I found out about him through Clubhouse. Yep. Yeah. But you, you have to listen because every advertiser, every sponsor, anyone that's going to invest in you, they ask the same dumb question. How many people follow you? How many people subscribe to you? How many people listen to you and whatever? And they fail to realize, and I'm saying this to every single sponsor, every single advertiser, ask yourself and be true. How did you get started? Someone took a chance on you. There was always a first person that invested in you, be it your mom, your dad, your good friend, your girlfriend, or whatever the case may be, or yourself. There was someone that believed in you, that placed their first ad when you had no idea what the hell you, do, you were doing. All right. Ask Mark Randolph. And this is something he said to me in a, in a conversation, the uh, co-founder of Netflix. He says, people don't invest in the product. They make the investment in the man behind the product. The product mm. is still on its own. So when I go back and I look at in 2009, September 1st, and I'll make this quick, Evan Carmichael only had 57 subscribers. 2010, he had 147. 2011, 495. 2012, he had 966. 2013, 3,602. 2014, 14,097. 2015, 98,607. 2017, 851,000 um, viewers. 2018, 1.5. 2019, 1.9. 2020, 2.5. 2021, September, 3 million subscribers. And how do you think he, he grew that organically? He did not go out and buy a box. He did not go out and... Um, pay for someone to, to get subscribers, patience, consistency. He produced the same product. Ask me, if this, was his product original? It was original no. at the time. He found mm -hmm. people just like you and I and wanted to know your top 10 list that led you to be who you are. And it's real easy to follow people that have already been where you are, where you want to be, that already has the golden ring all right. Mm -hmm. These are my top 10 things, whatever. But where the real conversation happens is that you were privy to the groundbreaking motivational Sundays with Kevin and friends when we took motivational quotes so that either created by one of us or created by someone else out in the world. And he said, what is your interpretation and your perception of that quote? How did it land on you? Whole nother conversation. So just think 10 years from now, when people are saying, now I understand what that quote means. Now I know how it lands. And now I have that conversation. 10 years from now, Sunday Motivations with Kevin and friends, our goal is 3.9 million people. And you as an advertiser or sponsor, ask yourself, why didn't you invest when it was cheaper to be part of the go-to guys team or talking with Kevin and son or RMK Productions Podcast Network? Because right now we're offering you the content. 10 years from now, we'll be charging you a premium for access to that content. And you know what? I love what you're saying. And I want to say this because this is, this is what I've been saying for a few months and it's really landing for me now or, or taking off either, either way, either getting grounded or taking off because I am the new Black Panther and I fly in a Wakandan jet. I may not be there yet, but it's coming. So I'm going to say this. Don't put doubt ever on, on, on a dream. Don't put doubt ever. You will never, get there. Never. Langston Hughes, a dream deferred. Yeah. That's one of my biggest poetic experiences, um, poetic figures in my life, because I've been writing poetry since 1992. So I'm going to say this. And this is and this is definitely big to me. And I'm going to write it down and, and put it in quotes. I am not where I want to be today. 
but I'm exactly where I need to be. And who's to say that tomorrow I am not where I'm not where I want to be. Basically saying right now, I'm not satisfied. I don't like where I'm at right now. However, this is part of the journey. This is where I need to be so I can enjoy the journey. I can see the beautiful struggle and build myself up. And the last part of what I said, who's to say that tomorrow, not necessarily tomorrow, like the next day, it could be next month. It could be a few months from now. It could be next year that I'm not exactly where I want to be. You know, being successful, being able to impact lives, not being popular, but being impactful. I have a saying, I would rather be impactful, not popular, because when you impact people's lives, they will always remember you. And they'll remember you fondly because you took the opportunity to help them, change them, elevate them without asking for anything. They remember that because people don't care until they know that you care. But being popular is seeing what everybody else is doing or seeing what currently everybody is gravitating towards and then turning yourself into that trend. But then with trends, trends come and go. Impact is forever. So let me sum it up once again, because I might have lost people in the, in the minutia because I love the English language and I love poetry and I love taking people on the path less travel. So let me do this one more time so I can make it clear. All right. I am not where I want to be right now. I do not like where I am. I know I can do better. I want to do better. I'm exactly where I, where I need to be. I need to learn this lesson. I need to enjoy the journey. It is a beautiful struggle. And then the last part, but who's to say that tomorrow I won't be exactly where I want to be saying that in the future, who's to say, whether it's society, family, or friends, naysayers, haters, whatever you want to categorize them as telling me you're not going to get there. But when I get there, that's exactly where I want to be. That was well said. Very profound. And again, for, to our listeners, I hope you savor this moment in this conversation. All right. Because the next question um, that I ask most podcasters, as a matter of fact, all, and this is the defining question, and it was asked to me When do you want to start your podcast? When do I want to start my podcast? Yes, I want to start my podcast. As soon as the universe tells me to start the podcast, I've started the process already and being on this podcast with you because you've got to understand you can have a pl platform. Sorry, that was a call coming in that you can have a platform and you can talk, you can promote it, you can market it and your built in fan base may ignore it. But you become valuable when other people say, I want to talk to you. I need you as a guest on my podcast because then you're offering value and you're putting yourself in front of other networks that without that other platform, they may never know who you are, what you do, and why you offer value. So I think outside of the ideas that I have for my own podcast, and I've actually co-hosted a podcast, um, the Look of Love podcast. And even though those episodes are not up right now, I'm going to actively do what I can to get those, po those podcast episodes up. My podcasting, podcasting that comes out of my heart and soul and spirit and being has actually started now because now, because of Kevin. And see, one thing about podcasting, you got to be fearless. A lot of people want to copycat. They want to follow a trend. With, with, with me, even talking to Kevin, even before this podcast, that's a mentor and mentee relationship. He saw a spark in me that most people would have ignored. So my podcast career has officially started today. Mark this date down. January 10th, 2022. Fresh into the new year. Not necessarily Happy New Year's or Happy New Year, singular, but Happy 2022 now.
because after the first few days, you can't really say Happy New Year because we're, we're already into it. We already had our first full week of 2022. But my podcasting career begins now because I am on a podcast. This podcast is going to be a springboard to my podcast ideas. And then as I learn from my master, as I learn from my mentor, Kevin, as to how to put a podcast together, how to cast for it, how to put episodes together, how to script for it and everything else. I will be giving other people, I will be giving people that are in my network the ability to be able to do their own podcast because it's not about me. It's about we. It's about we. And I remember because most Def is one of my favorite hip hop artists. And I think he said this on my Umi says, the future belongs to the we that believe. And even if he didn't say that, my Umi Says is one of my favorite songs, period, because it's so hopeful, it's so motivating, it's so inspiring. You cannot let you, don't ever let your dreams die. And that's some song lyrics from my friend Bowtie, who is the Pharrell of the Carolina. Shout out to Bowtie. But I'm going to get back to the point. My podcast career officially started January 10th, 2022. And you know who started my podcast career? The person that's interviewing me right now, Kevin, because I'm going to hold him accountable, but he's also going to hold me accountable. And that's the way it's supposed to be. And, and, I, and just like uh, a baby brother, he came in and stole my thunder <laughs> way un under. And exactly what he said, when you're asking yourself, when are you going to start your podcast? That, podca that podcast needs to start when the moment has moved you. I'm, I'm a thinker. I'm a writer. I'm a three-time published author and enough about me. My 24-year-old son, Theo McLemore, that co-host um, from time to time on talking with Kevin and son, you know, he kept saying, dad, when are you going to start your podcast? And I said, I can, I need to learn more. I got to research. I'm listening to this person, whatever. And he says, dad, dad, dad. I'm going, oh, he's doing the same thing my coaches did. They repeat things three times like I didn't hear it the first two times. And I said, what? He goes, how do you learn to swim? And I said, you hire a coach. He says, no. He says, you get in the water. Okay. You're going to make your mistakes. All right. If you try to do a perfect podcast, I will tell you it does not exist. Because you can take all the notes and you can script it out. And I tell people the same thing when I was teaching people how to prepare for a pitch sale on QVC, one of the largest shopping channels on the market. No matter how many times that we did a dry run of rehearsal, when lights, camera, action shows up, whoever you are at that moment and whatever conversation happens, that is your sale. That is the same way with your conversation. Your guests will run run shot, run rough shot over your podcast and it's your, your responsibility to ride them to where you want the conversation to go, to reel them back in when you want to set up the next um, part of your, your conversation and close the door like you were accepting your own, uh, I won't even say Oscar speech any, anymore because we need to have our own award shows too. And so I'm going to segue from that because if I was actually doing a full production, this is where the commercial will come in. This is where the sponsor will come in. There'll be a exactly. small break. We'll get a little water to come in. And then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the conversation you and I had about podcasting at historically black colleges, HBCUs. See that pause coming in there? Yeah. People, you're exactly. paying attention. People that are spending hundreds of dollars having someone teach you how to do a podcast. We're showing you the uncut version of the conversation that goes behind the scenes of how this is all coming together. So now so the mentor, quick question. Don't, don't want to throw you off. How, how am I doing so far? Because this has been a tutorial and an interview and content that we're going to release to the masses at the same time. How am I doing so far? Right. That's cool. Give me, give me an assessment. I, I, I'm going I'm going to tell you the same thing that Oprah Winfrey said about her guests. She says she has interviewed over so many thousands of the guests, world known people, actors, writers and poets. And she says at the end of every single uh, interview. All of them have reached over and goes, 
how did I do? How did I do? And Oprah's like going, God, you're bigger than me. I should be asking you, how do I do? You don't need to ask that question. All right. For the simple fact that we still, we're still going on is a confirmation that you're killing it. All right. The awesome. key thing is everything that we have, when you play this interview back, I want you to roll reverse because when I'm teaching you as part of this team at RK Productions and the 10 United Podcast, it is part of your responsibility to mentor the next one coming up. As my grandfather says, and I close every it. single podcast with this, my grandfather says, when you get to a point that you can help someone else, it is your duty to do so. Reach one, teach one. I got an extension of that. Oh, don't don't give it to me yet. I want to segue because we we, we don't want to we Let's don't want to muddy, muddy the water, and we don't want to give them too too much because we need people to join this family and l- learn. Because of all the podcasters, we're going to be the most unique team in podcast history. So you see those numbers that Evan Carmichael had in ten years. Mm-hmm. I'm going to fast track that because we're going to be different. We're going to be something special. All right. If you okay. if you knew what Microsoft was going to be and you had an opportunity to spend a thousand dollars into Microsoft, I already know where it's going to land. Would you spend thousand dollars doing that? My dad had a chance to get, to invest in some of these tech companies. He could have been sitting pretty right now. And that and kind I'm, of hurts. And I, I'm going to tell you that most of us get 10 opportunities to have things presented to us in our life that will be game changers. And it could be in our personal relationship. It could be in our professional relationship. It could be in the professional risk-taking relationships that we call entrepreneur. And what I'm going to give you a new title for entrepreneur, because we're professional risk-takers. There we go. We're dreamers with a higher purpose. So when we talk about historically Black colleges, every university across this country, and I would say I'm using every as a a broad stroke, has a media yeah. department. Yes. One of the things that we learned through the pandemic is that when the world shut down, some of the content that we got from the media was just noise. But if you're looking at, you look at the fact that how fast the growing population and interest of podcasting has turned is because we're getting more authentic and genuine conversations coming from people just like you and I, because right now this has turned into uh, a podcast interview to an instructional interview. Now we're going to educate people. The historically black colleges need to add podcasting as another media outlet, because I will guarantee you any, we have a couple of college age podcasters that are part of 10 United, the podcast network. That is our sub um, um, part of our, our, our program that we're mentoring, all right? Majority of the costs our company covers, $200 oh, awesome. per, per, per month. We look for sponsorships to sponsor a podcaster for one year. It allows mm-hmm. the college student, okay, to showcase life on that college campus as it exists in real time. Where, where to go in college, where to go get the best pizza, where the dances are, you know, where what fraternity life is about, what life is about on, on college campus. I didn't know I was poor until I got to college and had a rich roommate. I mean, if I told you that I used to go down at the end of the hall at that time, they had pay phones. We didn't have cell phones. And I watched everyone else get phone calls and packages from my parents. My parents weren't in that position. I used to go down and sit on the phone, pretend to talk. So people know that I had the same lifestyle that they had. My freshman year was a struggle. So when we talk about historically black colleges, there are 107 of those colleges. And if you count in some of those that are being mixed in there are Latino based and other origins. Um, These are places that my young brother, Ife and I and our team and our family at RMK Productions are gonna be trying to reach in order to get this type of education and experience on a college campus. When I look at the fact that if, if I can get a college student to create a space where I can get advertisers and marketers uh, and sponsors to sponsor that person's podcast, 
I can almost guarantee in four years, I will have one college graduate making over six figures per month doing the same thing you are doing, you and I are doing right now. And will not well, have give to me a, give me a challenge. In two years, I'm gonna give you at least five. In two, in, in two years, I, I will I will match that that. Okay. And then we're gonna but, so so hold on. Let's 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 make sure that the listeners and the people that consume this content remember this. Kevin, my mentor, is going to give five college students to become podcasters. And I don't like, I like influencer, but I like this term better. Creators. We're going to get five college creators. Kevin's going to get five. I'm going to get five. And we're looking at you, HBCUs. This is, this is especially for HBCUs. But guess what? Because you know what HBCUs are? Wakanda universities. Yep. Low key, black excellence every day. Yep, all day. Whether people understand, yes, there is the potential to be great, but all of these HBCUs, in my opinion, in my heart, mind, and soul, HBCUs are Wakanda universities. You're exactly right. I'll let you have. And, and I, I just want to tell you, I have never made a bet that I knew I can't win. So Ha-ha. you always have to make your bet with details. I already got three. <laughs> okay. No, I'm, I'm no, 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 no. And, and, and hey, hey, everybody, let me give y'all some context, right? All right. Kevin talked to me. Was it Sunday? It was Sunday. Today is Monday. Yesterday. Monday. Four hours. Okay. He has three. I got to get five. But we're going to get 10. We're, and knowing that he's an overachiever and I'm an overachiever, that's going to be on the low end. It, and, 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 and I will tell you, the reason why we're, we're doing this is because people remember what they've heard and what they saw a lot more than what they read. OK, my college, Central State University, I sent a nice one sheet of saying what we had to do and got nothing from it. OK. Uh-huh. Um, I've got a young, young man, Malik Hawkins, that is doing a podcast that is killing it at North Carolina. Oh. Auntie, you know Malik. You know I know Malik. Because, I know hey, Malik. hold on. Shout out. Shout out. Norfolk State University. Because that's where his mom went to. Yep. Shout out, Mrs. Hawkins. And I'm hey, about to Mrs. interview Hawkins. her next week. Yep. And, yo, and shout out. To Malik Hawkins, because guess what he is on Instagram? Verified. Yep. Already. Yep. So when I say that I love HBCUs, I may have gone to a PWI, but HBCUs raised me. Shout out to Orangeburg, South Carolina. Claflin University, South Carolina State University. That's my home base. Yes. That's my home base. I'm sorry, I had to get real excited because I... Yo, and yo, shout out to Deion Sanders and his team getting whooped by South Carolina State University a few weeks ago. Hey, I, I want to never, never I wanted, go against I, South Carolina I, State University. Shout out to Coach Pugh. I, All right, I, I had want, to talk my noise real quick. I, I wanted to tell you because I need to put a halo over uh, Coach Deion Sanders, NFL Hall of Famer. And the reason Love why, him. because early on in the pandemic, when I started my podcast, I put this out there in the world. If 80 to 90% of our academic and athletic talent took their talents for the next two years to one of the 107 historically Black colleges, what would the framework of education look like today? Deion Deion Sanders not only put his finger in the water, you saw what the ripples did in less than one year. So when we talk about HBCUs, uh, I want to talk to the parents that are having that new class of 2022, 23, 24, 25. When you are sending your child out into the universe, keep in mind those universities that will cheer and celebrate your child on Friday and Saturday nights. But four years thereafter, they will vote against your freedom and your independence and turn their back on you. 
do what McLeek Hawkins did. He got $1.2 million in financial assistance, could have went to any university, and he went to a university that represented him, and he took his talents where it was going to be most appreciated. And I will tell you, Deion Sanders, my hat goes off to you. I hope other coaches. Yo, I, I remember Deion Sanders playing for the Atlanta Braves. I'm a Southern, I'm a Southern bred Nigerian. I'm a Carolina bred Nigerian. There's no professional baseball team in the Carolinas as of yet. My favorite bat, my favorite baseball team will always be the Atlanta Braves. And shout out to the Braves marketing for always putting out the dopest fitted caps and yeah. all color waves and all colors. Right. Because they understand that Atlanta is the black Mecca. I will always be a Braves fan. Y'all don't even remember Deion Sanders playing baseball for y'all young heads. Y'all only know him for his football career. So shout out, always a shout out to Deion Sanders. Way to go, Coach, always. Coach Sanders. And now we're going to go to the third part and we're going to wrap this up. Because right, right now throughout the country, you know, it's, you hear a conversation called the Divine Nine. Both you and I are members of one of them. Um, Alpha, Phi Alpha, you know. Um, Kappa, Alpha, um, Alpha, Kappa, Alpha, Kappa, Alpha, Psi, Omega, Psi, Phi, Delta, Sigma, Theta, Sorority, Phi, Beta, Sigma, Fraternity, Zeta, Phi, Beta, Sorority, Sigma, Gamma, Rho, the, the Divine Nine. The reason why- And I Iota, Phi, Theta. I don't forget, I my, don't forget them rolling up in the back, but they I, still- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I did write that down, and I and I did not write, write it. Um, I did- Nope, I'm gonna get all of them. Don't worry, Kevin. That's why I am your student. I'm That's never gonna why. let my I'm never gonna let my teacher be lacking. You're exactly because right. I got I got friends that are iotas. Okay, shout out to my iota brothers. All right, and I, I want to tell you, fraternities through the media has gotten a bad name, and not saying that it's not without fault or cause, because in any institution, some people make bad choices and the actions have an effect on others that are doing well. But the reason why the Divine Nine came together is brotherhood and sisterhood because of service, wanting to make a difference. Because we are members of the Divine Nine, this cause that we're, we're on in order to educate, put out uh, original content, provide other opportunities, instead of getting given an education that you graduate in, within debt, and work at the same job you would have had if you'd have worked yourself in management, getting the government education. We need to band together. No one can do this one thing alone. All right. And we've got to remember that. So without giving uh, a full tutorial lesson on how to podcast, um, I want to thank my, my brother. All right. The young. Can I say one thing, though? You can say whatever you want to in closing. Oh, no. I, want, I wanted to say this. When it comes to our D9 organizations, I have friends all across the board and all of those organizations. When you're in college, yes, it's a, it's a healthy competition. I hope it is. It should be. But when you graduate from college, when you see your D9 brother or sister and you're in a position to help them or at least pass their name on, do that. Unfailingly, don't think about it. You find out they're a D9 member, Go extra hard as if they're your family member, because D9, being part of a D9, you bring that D9 energy. You are one of the best of the best in the diaspora. And how do you remain the best? By making sure the people that are within your circle are the best. And I'll say this too. Shout out to my team. And I'm probably making this announcement early. But it'll probably be announced later on social media, especially Instagram. I am going to be the publicist for Pro Fights Be Like. And they have over 50,000 Instagram followers. And the person behind that, behind that platform is also a member of Alpha Phi Alpha. But guess what? We celebrate all of our D9 right. brothers and sisters. You see what I'm saying? So the thing is, if you're part of a D9 organization, whether you're a collegiate, grad chapter, or indifferent to it because you pledged college and you don't have the means to, to be financial, get financial. 
with their means, help out the community because D9 organizations were built to be a shining example to the community and to uplift our community. Part of my alpha pledge is first of all, service of all, we transcend all. And also this is very important because black women do not get protected or celebrated enough. Part of the pledge of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is to respect womanhood to the highest of our ability or the highest of my ability. Have I had bad relationships? Yes, I have. Have I made mistakes? Yes, I have. But if I have an opportunity to protect a black sister or to stand up for a black queen, I'm going to do that. Know that. And because I'm, because I'm a member of a D9 organization, that holds me to a higher standard. That makes me a better person. It gives me a network. And no, I didn't pay for friends. I bought into the cause. So don't ever tell a D9 person they bought friends. That's not the case. Exactly. They were able to sign up for a higher cause and they were chosen. You're Remember exactly that. Right. You're exactly right. And so what I'm going to do before we, cl we close, and this is something that's important to our, our, our podcasters. Um, before you end an interview, because you always want to celebrate the fact that you had a, a guest on here. I'm going to put something out to you because one of the things with talking with Kevin, because we have a higher call to action, we surround ourselves with people that are like us. We don't drive by an accident. Our people get involved and they help. So I'm going to extend an open invitation. I co-host another podcast, which is called One Queen, Two Kings, where there's dynamic men that are uplifting, showcasing, and supporting dynamic women that have a higher cause and giving back to the female community. We talk about entrepreneurs, people. Our first guest on there was a six-year-old entrepreneur. Um, and we are actively seeking 100 girls with curls. It doesn't make a difference what color your skin is, but no. you've got to be supported by a, a man no. that is not intimidated. One queen, two kings. And the logo is, is killer logo looking behind that. The last thing I want you, um, you seasoned podcasters to remember, you always want to invite your guests back. So if a, you have an open door to coming back anytime to share this seat. And matter of fact, I'm probably going to ask you because my, because of COVID, my, my son has not been the healthiest person and because he's also a chef, um, I'm going to ask but low, you, but, but low key, I, I'm your, I'm your, I'm your podcast son. Okay. It still works. All right. I'm going to invite you <laughs> um, periodically. Cause I want to bring you back and have you sit in as a co-host on some of my, my podcasts. So if oh I'm going to extend God. an invitation, you don't have to accept it. You can think about it. The other, no, I don't, is, I don't know. I'm minute, very wait instinctual. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The answer is yes. All right. Wait a minute before you say yes. The other thing is, is that a lot of people are going to be excited about this interview. How do people reach you before you start your podcast? Ooh. Okay. So my social media handle on most social media platforms is that go-to guy. And spelling wasn't my strong suit. So laugh at me as I spell my own handle. T-H-A-T-G-O-T-O-G-U-Y. That go-to guy on Instagram, Twitter, and Clubhouse. I have a TikTok. I'm going to work on it. I'm a little bit older. I'm still trying to figure out that TikTok space. My TikTok handle is I am that go-to guy. On TikTok, you will find me on LinkedIn by my name, Ife Ekpanuma. First name is I-F-E Last name is E-K-P-E-N-U-M-A. You can find my Facebook and my, my LinkedIn. Same name. You'll find me. And I have my Facebook public figure page. It's the number one that go-to guy. So that's pretty much all my social medias, um, my, my top three social medias. And don't worry, y'all. I'm working on the YouTube page. I have a team member that's working on my YouTube page. So probably February, March, my YouTube with some of my highlights and some of the stuff that you want to see on YouTube will pop up. And of course, I'm working on this podcast because Kevin has blessed me with the opportunity to build a podcast. But if you just type in that go-to guy on Instagram, Twitter, Clubhouse, you will find me. 
And I want to shout out a uh, Brexis, who is the current at the time of this recording. He is the current clubhouse icon. He is in the UK doing amazing things. You know what I'm saying? He's doing amazing things and he's already impacted me because if you look at my profile picture right now, January 10th, 2022, Clubhouse likes that black and white, shades of gray um, picture for their icon logo. I had black and white photos of myself because I'm also a model. I've also had photos of myself from a photo shoot. Shout out to Isms of Art. Shout out to Dalvin Span in Columbia, South Carolina. I've had photo shoots of mine end up in an art museum. And I don't even actively pursue modeling right now. I will manage you, though. I am a super manager. I am an entertainment consultant. But getting back to the point, I have brand integrity. If you have a, a really dope social media handle, get it on as many platforms as possible so that if somebody types up your, your social media handle on that social media platform, you pop up. Don't change your name from different profiles to different profiles because now you make it harder for your fan base to actually find you follow you and support you but with that being said that's my information that go-to guy on most social media platforms and if y'all want to find me i'm usually on clubhouse like it's a day job that go-to guy i'm gonna say it one more time t-h-a-t-g-o-t-o-g-u-y and man kevin this is man i'm gonna say it again because I, i'm, I'm low-key a comedian <laughs> I am so happy to be here right now. That is all right. And so now podcasting 101, you actually know how to set up your outro for your show. Remember, make sure the last impression is supporting your guests. Make sure the last conversation is you invite your guests to come back on to the podcast, give them an open door. Also, if their experience is great, Ask them to please share the video when it gets released within their social network. If they hate, they know someone that will be an ideal guest for them, please refer I'm them. I'm bringing the whole playlist. Yep. I'm bringing please. everybody. <laughs> you also have to remember, in closing, you only have, have one to two calls to action when closing your, your show. So the first thing I'm going to ask is that you go to RMK Productions. Exactly. And network and subscribe and follow, because believe it or not, how you monetize your podcast is by how many impressions that you make. Even though I have uh, a 94 percent um, viewing rate means the average person is spending about five minutes looking at something on RMK production, which in advertising dollars, that's gold because that's yes. high. But you've also look at the rating of media. When you look at the fact that my demographics goes from 18 to, 19, to to 74 years of age, I hit a market or, or RMK hits a market that very few other companies know how to do. And when someone at Disney, I won't mention this name, calls and okay. says, how, how in the hell did I do that? I am not even going to answer because you've got more money than I have and you have to pay me for that answer. Yeah, spend some money with us. Yeah. So um, with that said, I want to thank all my listeners and loyal fans. And I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Talking Wit, W-I-T, Kevin and Son, and my very special guest, Ife, a person. I don't even feel like I'm a guest. I feel like I'm a family member, man. You, you are a family. You got to let me finish talking instead of interrupting me now. And that's something you don't do on a podcast and whatever. But anyway, it's, it's entertainment. We've educated you. All right. We've entertained you. Okay. We made you think. Remember, education is not designed to make you comfortable. It's designed to make you think. There's an open door policy for, for anyone with a bigger dream and a bigger purpose to join um, RK Productions and be part of 10 United. We're looking for people that are committed, that want to get a message out and be part of a team that's collaborate. I'll explain to you the details and the benefits of being that if you reach out with info at rmkproductions.net. Remember this. And adopt his head, um, hashtag. Find 1,000 reasons to be kind to someone. As my grandfather always said, when you get to a point in life and you can help someone else, it is your duty to do so. 
reach one, teach one. We fade to black and we're out.